Hello again, everybody. Barry Hyatt here in Scottsville at the UK Extension Office with my good friend, Janet Johnson, good. who I hope yes. fall is treating you well. Oh, fall is a beautiful time of the year, Barry, even though we've had some Indian summer days. We have. It's time, though, to think about a cool treat for supper. Yes. And I understand one of your good friends has mm -hmm. given us an idea to get supper started tonight that, with a great fall soup. That's exactly right. Mr. Mr. Dennis Bronner in Lafayette has his own pumpkin farm. He's had a pumpkin Yay. farm now for about 20 years. That is great. And he said, you know, we have this recipe where we make, we, that we use pumpkins, you know, and we combine it with soup and everything. And so I said, well, I will talk to Janet and see what she says. And so you say what? Well, I am going to do just a little variation okay. on Mr. and Ms. Bronner's recipe today. Uh, you know that I love lots of other vegetables, and so we're going to talk about how to merge Mr. Bronner's recipe sure. and kind of show how I tweaked it, and then we're going to uh, just go from there. And I think okay. a lot of it depends on someone's time schedule, how much time they have mm -hmm. to work with basically the pumpkin as a baking container. Mm -hmm and how that you would work with that. Now, I understand Mr. Bronner maybe uses a larger field pumpkin for his container, mm -hmm. and I think that's gonna depend on a person's space, their mm -hmm. oven space, mm -hmm. and their ability to, to work with a pumpkin, and I'm mm -hmm. talking about strength, right. because to cut a pumpkin open is not always simple. Right. So um, I understand that, so we're gonna tweak that just a little, and what I've done is look at it by working with the pumpkin, first of all, working with smaller pumpkins, sure. and you can do smaller field pumpkins too. They Most come certainly. in various sizes. Most certainly, yep. And because I, with my strength, could manage actually cutting the top off, and that's really where we start, mm -hmm. and then we remove all of the seeds, and this is kind of hot because I've had them in the oven like uh, Mr. Bronner does, and seeds in as much as we can to create a cavity. Okay. And also the pumpkin flesh begins to get tender that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the soup is actually made, and we're going to show how to make this soup because I love this soup. This is a great variation on my family's favorite hamburger casserole. Yes. But we're doing a soup, a chowder, mm -hmm. using potatoes, yeah. great fall potatoes. Sure. Potatoes are all about fall. It's time to dig those potatoes right. and use them, and so this is a great way to use those fall potatoes mm -hmm. and perhaps utilize your pumpkin to add a little more flavor or to just simply use it as a serving container, Most like you certainly. see here. Most certainly. And it can work well. So let's show you the soup, and then we'll get back okay. to the pumpkin and what we did. So um, what I've done is basically brown a pound of lean ground beef mm -hmm. and drain the ground beef as a starter. Okay. And then I've added a chopped onion, a small onion. Mm -hmm. and you may like yellow or the sweet onions, whatever mm -hmm. flavor that you like. Right. And then I added a little bit of garlic, minced garlic to that. Mm -hmm. You can buy that pre-prepared or you can take the cloves, smash them down and chop, chop. And mm -hmm. you've got the fresh, pungent sure. garlic. Well, certainly, yeah. So after browning the beef, I removed that from the pot mm -hmm. and then added a little bit of butter. Now I tweaked Mr. Bronner's recipe to add a little butter and then sauteed the onions and the garlic in the butter mm -hmm. and then added the ground beef again and I've stirred that and that's where we are right now. So uh, next what we begin to do is we select our potatoes and you can cube or slice them. Now the type of potato you choose will determine the consistency of this chowder. Okay. Chowder you want to be a little chunky, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if you just wanted a more of a, a soup texture, then uh, the yellow potatoes, the Idaho Golds, mm -hmm. um, those would be great, or mm -hmm. you could even use uh, many other varieties. But I've chosen the old standard white, okay? Right. Sure. And I just peeled that and then chopped it into cubes. Right. Now, what I did was take the equivalent that was going to give me four cups of chopped potato. Okay. Okay? So, so that's kind of where this recipe goes because I'm adding more vegetables than potato proportion. Okay. Now, sorry, Mr. Bronner, that's, you know, <laughs> I'm going for the tomatoes and the corn a little bit more than tomatoes. I but think he would like this just fine. I think he's going to enjoy it. So this is a good variation. And he did indicate that you can do what you want to yes, with this recipe. Did. Yes, so, he did. So I'm taking that liberty. So we're adding the uncooked, these are uncooked potatoes mm -hmm. to the ground beef mixture. Right. Okay. And then what we're doing is just doing a can, a can, a can. Okay. And I'm doing two cans of tomatoes, diced tomatoes with green chilies. Okay. 
Now, if you wanted more tomato, you could buy the diced tomatoes that are, and I think they have a little bit of, uh, they may even have some green chilies or onions and green pepper. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine too. Sure. And then just the small can of green chilies exclusive, but this is an easy mixture. We don't drain, and I'm adding two cans of this. Okay. That increases, again, the vegetable content. Right. It also, the liquid will kind of thin the soup down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're going to prepare it on the stove top, this is a good way to increase your liquid mm -hmm. and uh, you can probably work a little faster mm -hmm. than adding the soup to a pumpkin and then baking it. Okay. Not to say you can't, but we have to be very careful with density and things getting done in the mm. center in right. the oven. Right. And, and so that's why I would recommend maybe at home you might want to use the smaller, definitely smaller field pumpkins right. or even the little individual pie pumpkins, mm -hmm. treat it the same. Mm -hmm which we'll talk about in a moment, how we bake that. Sure. And uh, use smaller pumpkins. Right. So that you can be sure that all your soup is heated and cooked to the center. Right. Because this is chunky, it is thick, and that's a little bit of a danger if we don't heat it adequately. Okay. Okay. Sure. But the easy way is just to do it, like we said, on the right stovetop, sure. like we're doing, and then serve it in the pumpkin. Right. How about that? Okay, so I am also going to increase the corn. Okay. And Barry, I am not draining the corn. I'm using two, uh, about 14.75 uh, ounce, which we always call a 15 ounce can. Right. Even though they're not. And I'm using a new thing, since we're using the tomatoes with green chilies, I'm using corn, the fire roasted corn kernels okay. that you can purchase now. Sounds good, yeah. It adds a little bit more Southwest flavor. Right. So, that's a little variation that I'm using there. Okay. So the green chilies with tomatoes and the corn, and you can see yes, it's how- it's becoming very, very big. Very big, <laughs> very, very big. big. In, the, in, the, in the pot here for sure. Yes, now- <laughs> And you're um, not done yet. I'm not done yet, that's right. This makes a lot of soup, hence why I'm cutting back on the potatoes a right. little bit there. Sure. Now I'm adding a large can of evaporated milk. I think that's exactly what Mr. Varnum did. I think that's great mm -hmm. to thin down the soups, and this is a cream of chicken soup and a cream of celery soup. Oh, wow, okay, so two different kinds. Yes, now I think Mr. Ronner may have used uh, three cans of condensed soup of uh, maybe a cream of mushroom, but I'm kind of cutting the sodium back a little bit. Sure. Kind of pulling that in mm -hmm. some so that we are not getting the soup too thick, right. and I'm trying to keep it thinned down, and you can see how that, you know, it's still very, very thick because you, you would you want the potatoes to cook, so you want a thinner mixture to start with. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone might say, well, why didn't you just cook those potatoes ahead of time? Well, you could if you really wanted to speed it up, okay? Right, right. But in order to, to cook that and thin it even more, because that's pretty thick, mm -hmm. I'm thinning with chicken broth, okay? okay? And this is how that it would differ on a stove top rather than an oven, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. you, you definitely need to kind of kick the moisture up here a little bit so that it has time to simmer and cook without sticking on the bottom. Right. So uh, I think on the recipe I put approximately two cups. That depends on the size of your potatoes, okay. how many potatoes you do add, right. and kind of the thickness of the mixture. But you can see that that is still pretty thick. Yes. And then we would want to, again, simmer the soup right now. or we could put it in the smaller pumpkins so mm -hmm. that we would guarantee that everything would look cooked through right. and you could do some little individual pumpkins mm -hmm. because these you could get about four little pumpkins inside your oven. Right. Again, depending on your oven, the field pumpkins can well, fill up your Breyer, oven. Now he has different sizes. This, is, this was a larger size, but I mean, he had smaller field pumpkins And that's too. what we're talking you about. Know. I'm mm -hmm. getting down here to more of the individual serving size right, to exactly. make sure that I could probably get four of these little guys. And probably a little bit safer cooking as, as far as it being it, in the it oven. It is, too. and, and mm -hmm. that's what we want people to understand that when you cook on a low oven and that's about 200, 250 degrees, mm -hmm. you really have to work at making sure things get cooked to the center. Right. And so therefore, the larger the pumpkin, and a pumpkin is thick to begin with, sure. and then a thick chowder, mm -hmm. the more we have to really worry a little bit about food safety, just making right. sure that everything is bubbly, et cetera. But we don't want to overcook because the pumpkin could kind of begin to collapse. Right, so you've got that 
situation going on yeah, too. Yeah, so so for for me, I would probably do a stove top because I'm speeding as all, so this is like, get it done. <laughs> but I do like the idea of what Mr. Bronner did because what you do, when, once you slice the top off the pumpkin and mm -hmm. the smaller ones are easier to work with with mm -hmm. a good sharp knife, <laughs> big good sharp knife. Yes. Then you remove the seeds, you put it in a little baking dish like we've done here. Mm -hmm. We replace the top and put that in a 250 degree oven mm -hmm. for about an hour until the flesh is tender. And you can see that it's it's tender, we can mm -hmm. squeeze it, squeeze it a little bit, but sure. it's not collapsing. Right. And now the pulp's had time to maybe cook mm -hmm. so that you're not putting soup in an uncooked product like that too. Right. So I like that stage and it does get uh, a nice little golden brown and it's a pretty little container pretty cool. to mm -hmm. show. And wouldn't that be nice for everybody to have their own little pumpkin? Most certainly. As a serving dish. Yeah. So you would simply spoon uh, the soup once it's cooked right into the pumpkin. I think we've got we've a got a shot, shot of, of that. that. I think we do. Yeah. Yes, we finished that. You could serve it out of the pumpkin, or if it's a, a large, a little bit larger than this one, you could probably serve mm -hmm. everyone out of that. Right. And uh, the smaller ones, though, could be your own little personal pumpkin. Yeah. So this is a very, very tasty fall chowder, and thank you, Mr. and Ms. Bronner, for sharing this yes. with us. Because, uh, like I said, this recipe mimics a favorite uh, country cookbook, Casserole, uh -huh. where um, uh, pasta was used instead of potatoes. Right. But it's a very similar type of taste, mm -hmm. and it's delicious. Yeah. It's really, so really good. Already. I've tried it. I tried it at home last night to uh -huh. taste test because I, I want to make sure that you I think to, people yeah. love it. And I was putting the variations because I, I like to get those vegetables kicked up. Right. Well, and really do that. So it's a very colorful, very pretty, pretty fall potato chowder, and it's lovely. Mm -hmm. So, and you can enhance serving in a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Small pumpkins baked would probably add a little of the pumpkin flavor. Sure. Impart that to uh -huh. your soup as it bakes in the smaller containers. So right. there we go. You know, we've talked before about the sweet versus sour, how you can combine them sometimes, or sweet and salty, I oh, should yeah. say. And, uh, and you know, that's kind of what this would be, basically. It is, and I must, uh, one thing that I wanted to try, and I told Barry I was going to, was to actually cube some pumpkin. But the, the varieties of pumpkin that I was working with here, uh, and, and most pumpkins tend to have a, a what I'll call a stringier flesh. Mm -hmm, now that's mm -hmm. not bad because you get that with a spaghetti squash mm -hmm. and that's nice. Right. But you almost have to mash it and puree it to work with breads mm -hmm. and other things. But if you purchased an acorn squash, which is a cousin to yes, the pumpkin, sure. or a butternut squash, and you could cube that because that flesh is more compact. Mm -hmm. That would be a nice addition to the soup. So there you go, another possibility yeah, there. Yeah, just like we've added the potatoes, cube sure. that and add it. Yeah. So there you go. That's all kinds of fun things to do with this great soup. And thanks, many thanks to the Bronners for That's sharing. That's exactly right. We thank them so much for sharing. And hey, if you guys want this recipe, oh, so easy to get, you can email me at North Central. My email address there is barry.hyatt at nctc.com. Or simply go to our website. The address is www.nctc.com. We will make sure the recipe is on there. And once again, thanks so much to the Bronners for this uh, very nice uh, recipe idea. It and it's, it's, it's a very great, nice. great recipe for the Halloween season, I guess you could it's say. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, Janet, thanks for your time and thanks Thank for you, Barry. thanks for taking time uh, to kind of kind of modify the recipe a little bit and and make it really tasty. That's it. Thank you very much. Most Happy certainly. fall to us all. That's right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care and have a great rest of your day.